I want to show you guys one other great discovery I had. So I broke. I need 10 minutes. I broke my breadboard and I saw these little. Um, Hi, sweet. Dad is talking to the stream. I'm teaching class right now. Okay. Please, I said I need 10 minutes, so please stop. Okay. So my breadboard had these little, um, this is what's inside it. This is what you're plugging your jumpers into. It's like little metal female spring, spring clasps. Here's what it looks like. Um... There it is. Okay. And I realized you can use this to like make easy connections to like um, even component legs of stuff and then solder to it. So like I noticed you can like attach this to a circuit board. Like it actually goes onto the board. second okay look at this if you want it actually lines up with like these prototyping boards it lines up exactly so think about this you you then can just add solder paste and just drag solder that. And you got all these connectors coming off your board. And then you just, if you cut, if you cut this like at the right spot, you'd have enough room to take like shears, electrical shears, and cut off like right, right at the crotch where the little, um, sticks come out to connect to the base you would cut it like right there and then you'd have like these little pins sticking off which then you could spot weld to or solder like um you could spot weld to it or you could spot weld in advance before you even put it on you could spot weld like wires coming off of here and then you'd be able to just easily solder that on but notice like i don't need helping hands like it's gripping for me it, it grips and you can just adjust it to move it exactly where you want it and you can also use these like cut off individual ones and just do one at a time and you can also use this like let's say um you want to connect two pieces of nickel strip to each other because i'm planning to like make my traces like this two pieces can be like coming butted up against each other and you could hold the two um, with this as like a little clamp, they're kind of bent out. I need to like re retorque it by pinching it together so it's like tight again. Um, so now it'll grip the 0.1 millimeter. So here, uh, you could like clamp two things together and it would act as like a holder while you, while you solder. Um, I wrote, I wrote down like 10 things you could do with this. Maybe I'll have to make a video for each one. So that's kind of just an intro. Maybe that's just a teaser because I have to go. But we'll go into all the many ways you could use this. But th consider this to be a new electrical connector I discovered for the electronics community. This thing has a hundred, it has at least 10 amazing uses. Including, you can even put these pins on like, you could put, you could put one of these female clasps or female clips onto the leg of like a diode, a, a through hole diode. And then it's like holding onto it and then you can solder that and then you can like spot weld to this to send off like a little trace or whatever. Um, you can also like solder one of these to the end of a wire facing the female outward and then you'd be able to plug another wire into it because it basically is the same thing as a proto board. You'd be able to plug and play onto it. So that's another thing. Coming off like this board, 
you could you could individually solder these to a pin with the base of it facing out like that and then the side of the board would have a really low profile place to plug in stuff because the normal ones you do that with it's like got a these metal pins that go through and then it, it takes a 90 degree turn and it's got like a pa a plastic lifting header that makes the thing like this tall you guys know like the arduinos that are fully like like the ones with the plug and play it's like black plastic and then the plugs are this tall so it takes up way too much room for like a tiny tiny robot application so you can make your own with these things from a breadboard if you break the breadboard and take these little rails out and and you'd have to obviously cut them into individuals so it's not electrically conductive down the whole thing so they're separated and then you'd solder it individually onto each one of these little pads and then you could actually plug wire into this so um, I don't have a wire with me you get the point I, well here's one so look you could like You'd be able to plug a wire into that. Um, although you'd probably have to like tack it into place like with uh, some hot glue or something. Or no, some uh, some dental dental filling material with the UV cure dental filling paste. You'd, you'd tack weld it with that so that it like stays better. Because this wants to, it's kind of loose. But it's still a connection point. Like, you know it's a solid connection because this is from a breadboard. So it's solid enough electrically. Um, so you could use it for stuff like that. So there's so many applications of this. And so I'll be using these extensively. Um, I just named a few off the top of my head, but there's a lot more. Also, you could even, like, when you're dead bugging, you could clip one of those clasps onto one of the pins of the pinouts of, like, a TQ or... TFQP form factor little IC because forget dip style it's too big so TQFP form factor those tiny little pinouts they're they're like one millimeter spacing or two millimeter spacing you just bend one pin up one down one up one down so you get a little more space to work with and then you put one of those clasps on that I just showed you and while it's holding itself on you can let go it's going to actually hold on because it's tight you can then um, put some solder paste on it, like blow hot air at it, and it would like, or use your soldering iron, and it would then join to it. But you wouldn't need like as much helping hands help for that. So then, you would you would basically have something helping you hold that into position because it's holding itself in, and you could attach your wire to that before you do this to the back of that female class. So you'd have it ready to go, and you just clip it on. And then you'd be able to just blow header it, solder itself on. And then you'd have to probably clip them all on and blow header to solder them all at once. Or, or individually solder with your solder iron. But, you know, there's different ways. i got to experiment to see what works best. But those those clasps, I feel like, could help a lot if, this, if that idea works. Or you might want to just, like, lay down all your traces and, like, glue them down um, with, like, uh high heat exhaust paste for repairing the exhaust of your car a two part um, 500 degree capable high heat putty you could you could use as a glue for when you're going to be soldering something you can use it to hold things in place so you could like do that or you could paint it with UV cure solder mask compound Paste down all of your little um, nickel strip traces to the surface, and then you'd set your IC on that, and and you'd like you know they'd be all glued down, and then you could put your solder paste onto those, and then set the IC on it, and then hot air gun or use a soldering iron, and it would like join with solder. And then from there, you'd be able to bend all those pins up or out or send them wherever you need to send them in your circuit. And uh, so that'd be just a cool 
a cool way to dead bug. Um, that's kind of what I'm leaning toward, I think. But I, I would definitely have a lot of different things I want to try with those little clasps I showed you guys, though. I think those could help for a lot of stuff like this. Um, so maybe I, I wouldn't use the class for dead bugging for that, but I, I might use it for other stuff to make certain types of connectors and stuff. So we'll see on that. But it seems like it there could be a lot of applications. I wrote down a whole bunch of my notes. I was brainstorming the other day. So that was the other cool announcement about the electronics.